Welcome back to the channel guys, today you're joining us at Rotherham Golf Club where we're going to be having a real look at my game and where it's sat on this front nine. Sharing the front nine at Rotherham Golf Club for the first time since moving here and I've also got a new stick in the bag which we're going to talk about. Um, it's a big one, it's a very big one. There's a lot of rave about these clubs at the minute and um, after testing it, I can't wait to share how I feel and I feel something different with this club that I've never felt with another club before and that's serious, you know, obviously. I'm not just saying that I'm not an advert, as you know. Um, I'll always share honest like, opinions on things, but there's something with this club that I felt, and I must say I've never felt like this before. Right, so we're playing off the yellow tees this morning. We're going to play the front nine, and it's 372 yards. I wouldn't usually have to drive it out first, but we're off the forward tees. And I feel like... Um, if I do the, miss this a little bit right, I'm in a short enough club that I can probably get on to sort of front at green. I think right is the sort of bailout here. No need to worry about that though. That's straight out middle. Which is a good start because we've got a few people behind us. So we need to play quite efficiently today. Well, this must be the first time I've played on my own in years. Um, which I were thinking to myself, it'll give me a chance to see what my game's like with no accountability. 63 yards, because sometimes um, I do wonder whether it's the occasion that hinders my golf or whether it's just me. 64 yards. It's not sat too bad. Stop, 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 not too bad, not the best. We have got a little bit of greens maintenance going on in a minute, so every month for a winter they kind of slit the greens just to keep them draining well. So if there's any odd sort of bumps and stuff like that, just bear that in mind. Never up, never in. So the second hole here at Rotherham was quite a tough hole. It's 212 yards to get past this bunker on the left hand side and it's actually about just under 400 yards. I think it's 396 the hole. I'm not sure about driver. Um, I think driver could bring a lot of trouble into play if you miss it left or right. I think I'm going to hit free wood. Oh, that's bad. That's left. There's a ditch up there, so I'm going to need a little bit of luck. We're probably a few minutes into this video, and you're probably thinking you've not mentioned your putter yet, your new club. Guys, honestly, I've spent more time looking for my ball than actually hitting balls, and we've got people behind, so obviously I will try and mention it, but first shot I hit straight out middle. It took me five minutes to find it. And second shot, yeah, it's in rough, but this sunlight, you know, glaring down and you've got, bit, you know, leaves and longer grass, it's a bloody nightmare. I think if you're playing some winter golf, uh, I think I'm going to sort of look for probably using a yellow ball. Try and get a yellow ball or something a bit easier to see. 134 yards. That's a good strike. And it's the right line. If it's the right distance, we could be on money with that, I think. Steady, steady. I thought I'd, uh, thought I'd hit that too hard at first. So this putter, what's different about this putter? And it's only a feeling. We're not getting into too much technical stuff on this video. But in all my career playing golf, or that's career, I'm sounding like I'm a tour pro, but in all my time playing golf, I've always felt a good putter, but I've always felt like I've got to control the club face by holding the club face release off. So being a little bit more sort of, you know, this kind of finish, not letting the club head pass my hands too much, really trying to manipulate and control that lean edge to get the putter into square to win. 
Now with this putter, as soon as I picked it up, I felt like I could let the weight of the club head have a little bit more freedom. And I never feared once that I was going to pull the ball left. So the whole reason I've tended to sort of be a bit more, you know, handsy or handle drag it is to control that lead edge because I've always feared that I'd pull the ball left. You know, when I'm not playing my best golf, I always feel like I'm starting the ball a little bit left and I'm pulling it left. That's the fear, unless I hold that club face. With this putter, ever since getting it, from the moment I took it out on the practice screen and it were fitted, it were remote fitted, I've been able to let the club release and I have never once felt that the ball's come off left to, you know, where the club face has pointed or where I've intended on, you know, the start line. I've always felt no matter what I do, I get a really good roll. And, you know, I'm not here to market this putter. As you guys know, you know, PHG have been quite friendly with me and they've sent me golf clubs and stuff like that. And I've not tried their putter. I've not actually gamed it or played it. So their putter could just be as comparable. And we'll do some testing with that one in future, you know, to see if that gives you a similar feeling. But so far, this is the first putter I've ever felt confident with of letting the putter go, letting the weight of the club do the work. So one of my favourite little holes on golf course, this third hole par three. Pin is 130 yards. I think I'm going to hit. It's either a big wedge or a little nine. And I think I'm going to commit to a big wedge. Obviously, I'm relatively new here, so I'm still like kind of having to, you know, I bet a lot of members here just whack a club out. They know what they're hitting. I've got a feeling this could create a bit too much backspin and I end up at front at green, but it's probably better than the alternative. Let's see. Well, it's pretty much at it. I can't zoom in because I've got no one on camera. Oh, it's gone quite long actually, I think. From my eyesight, I think it's pitched more sort of like three quarters up the green. If my eyes are right. Let's have a little zoom in. I do need glasses actually. Oh no, it must have either spun back or my eyes are a shot. It did actually get some spin back. Didn't pitch as far up as I thought it did, but it's, wow, that is a lot of spin back. So you guys will know that we're going full time with the channel from 1st of December and the intention is to play a lot more golf. I'm even playing in the Yorkshire PGA pairs this year for the first time in a long time. We are resident head coach and professional James, who's, I would say he's a full-time golfer. He still coaches, but he's very competitive. So I've got a great playing partner. And usually in a pairs, there's a bit less accountability because Obviously, it's not an individual score. I'm not too bad, so I'm hoping we can go on a nice run, although we have drawn a really strong pairing. If you're from Yorkshire, you might know James Walker. Um, really good golfer. He's actually Graham Walker's son. So it, it will be a tough first round. Oh, that's come off a bit too hot. It's the first time out with this putter. I've had a little bit of a put on putting green with it, but first time out. And do you know what? I'm a bit lazy there because my ball weren't lined up perfectly. And instead of getting down and just tweaking it, I just hit it. If you're going to use these alignments, you've got to use them right, aren't you? So four, four, five hundred and ten yards, part five. I like to aim left on here, sort of over this bunker on left. And if um, if I don't get the third, then uh, it's safe. And you've got a good, you've got a second shot in. Fade. Oh, it's fading nicely. I'll do very nice. A bit out at bottom, if I'm going to be entirely honest with you, but got a lovely shape. So we've got 2 2 8 in. 
you guys are going to probably laugh or some of you might laugh and I know James Robinson will laugh but I've always said um, you know the, the point of this channel are always to try to get me to play more golf but in reality because I've been working a full time job since having the channel I've actually played less golf because I've just not had the time to be able to make playing vlogs alongside a full time job not if I wanted to grow an audience anyway which obviously was the was a parity because obviously once you've got the audience you can then obviously um, create enough revenue to be able to work a little bit less and play more golf and that's where we are now from first is when we go full time you know I'll be able to start to make the vlogs that I really want to make and this is what people are going to laugh about but I'm actually going to try to play more competitive golf not to win money but you know I think James Wilshire made a point about this when he tried to qualify for open I think Rick Shields and um, and Guy got onto him a little bit. I'll just do this and then we'll carry on. Oh, that's going to miss right. Miss that bunker. Yeah. They got onto him a little bit saying, yeah, oh, he's, no, he's not good enough. I'm sure, don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure I saw this on, on Instagram or t Twitter, but they said he weren't good enough to sort of qualify or, or you know, compete in playing in an open. If you watch James's um, YouTube channel, or you follow him on social media, it's quite clear to see. And I've played with him, he's a very, very good golfer. And he's smart enough that he probably knows his level. And I think he said something along the lines of, he's not going to qualify, he's not trying to qualify to the, for the open thinking he's going to win it. But by trying to qualify for the open, he's going to reach levels that he's probably never reached before. And, you know, setting that higher bar and challenging yourself, sometimes really good. You don't have to be trying to win the Open to, to, to um, you know, enter qualifying. And I think that's something along the lines of what I want to do. I want to sort of go down a, a journey of trying to play competitive golf again, even though, you know, realistically, I'm not in a mindset of thinking that I'm going to be winning anything. It'd be nice to improve my level by being on that path. There was a bit of pressure on that one. <laughs> Two in front walking past after that speech. My God, it went in, I didn't even see it. I've just watched that down the line video back and you can't see it go in, I'm gutted. But uh, that's probably one of the first times I've chipped in or first time I can remember chipping in on the channel. I didn't bloody get it. Right, we've got a dog leg par four. It's a tough one this actually. I mean, let me see what it measures. It's 382 yards off yellows. It feels a lot longer than that if you play it. But we've got to firstly get a positional shot. So run out is 245. And I think to get around that corner is about sort of 195, 200 from this tee. But if I hit just like a 5 iron or a 4 iron, I'm going to leave such a long shot in. So I'm going to try to aim that middle with a bit of draw and play my hybrid club. When I'm walking up to green, I was just thinking it back of my mind. Playing on my own with like no accountability feels like there's not much, there's no sort of like pressure or anything like that. And I'm just start, sort of wondering whether I might need a bit of like sort of more mental coaching than actually swing coaching. I'm going to have some golf lessons, mainly for sort of shorter game. I think my chipping and my pitching is horrendous for, you know, for the amount of experience I've got playing golf. But in terms of like, full swing and and confidence i'm feeling like i've no fear coming out here today like there's no fear when i'm playing like in competition i'm thinking a bit more of where not to miss where i'm just thinking more fair way what shape i want to it but there's not as much fear of it in a a bad shot so i guess i'm swinging with a bit looser with a bit more freedom Hopefully that's long enough to get around the corner because it's right tight at line at corner. Let's see. Get down there. If I can give one bit of advice for today, don't use a red striped golf ball in autumn. Because it's uh, it's a bit like where's Wally. 
Right, 164. One of the night. I thought that actually, 164. It doesn't look it, but do I go a little 7 iron, a little control 7? It's come out nice. If it's the right club. Didn't see it land at all. I really do need glasses, guys. I've got glasses, I just don't play in them. Um, I'm absolutely fine looking down at the ball, but you know, in sunlight like this and any sort of conditions, I've just, I can't see them. I can't see them come down. Right, I'm chipping this just because obviously they have slit the greens and this, I mean, if it were summer, I'd definitely be putting this, but just a bit unpredictable at the minute. Not my preferred shot. This is where I want some lessons with James. Right. It's like that, it's just not good enough. It's like wasted, a wasted opportunity. It shouldn't be, I mean, that's probably six, seven feet away. That was weight that kept that out. I think I got the right line there. So this is 344 yards. Sun's really bright here, so I'm just hiding each corner a little bit. We've got a ditch that runs across fairway. I think it's round about 200 yards, so I mean, it's been wet today. I'm probably going to wait. I'll hit a five iron. I'll just play a bit cautious. Oh, that's straight up into the sun. Let's see if we can see that come down. Not seen anything. I hope that's straight. It felt all right. It felt like it set off to me. It felt like it set off just right off with a bit of draw. Let's see if I'm right. It's 133 yards. You'll not see much from this angle, but I'll put an overlay in from the shade. Pins on bottom right. And I'm going to hit a good pitching wedge. It's a good strike, and it's not dicing with bunker. Oh, it's coming a lot more than I expected that actually. It would have been dicing with bunker, but it's long enough. Well, that's not too bad for distance control, is it? Birdie putt. Because I've not really been playing a lot of golf. I'm a bit like in between hitting them firmer and direct, or let, let the break take the... I don't think the break as much as a normal, so I'm going to play this one without so much break. Yeah. So we've got three holes to play on this front nine, 404 yards. It's a pretty straight hole. I mean, I tend to aim again down this left hand side and play a little bit of a fade. I'm saying tend to like I've played here for years, but when I did used to play more regular, I used to play a lot of sort of uni events here and open events before getting a job here. And I always used to sort of aim at that left hand tree. And usually if you don't quite get your cut, you've got a shot into green from that side. Oh, that's the first bad one of the day. That is really bad. <laughs> that one's set off left and gone left. I've waited a long time on that hole. 90 yards. There's absolutely no chance on this earth that I should have lost that golf ball. But with that sun, you just literally, it's impossible to see anything in this, in this like longer grass. And I just can't look any longer. <laughs> Unfortunately, I should have got a yellow ball out two or three holes ago. Um, I didn't, so I've lost the ball, unless I find it walking down. Ah, it's through, but it's lucky, and it's short. I've just realised I've not got uh, my stripe. 
But I've got a, a yellow strike ball in bag, so I will switch it on next. Oh! I'm going to give myself a four there, and I don't care what you say. We're on the forward tee today, but on this eight fall from the back as a, a longer hitter, you're probably not even entertained driver because the last thing you want to do is block yourself out on that right-hand side, you know, potentially going trees. You probably lay up with a club around about sort of 200 yards. It's 396 yards. It's a, a low stroke index and sometimes one that, you know, it's almost like a par, par and a half, really. It's a, a tough one, but where we are, I don't think there's any way of eliminating the trees on the right or left, so I'm just going to bomb it up there. Bomb up there and see what happens. Oh, stay there, it's fading a bit. Oh yeah, it's definitely hit the overhanging trees. I don't think it's wide enough to be in real bother, but it's going to have lost a bit of distance. So we've got about 130 yards into green. It's a blind second shot this 8-4, but if you're playing here as a visitor or a member, if you look on counter at till, it'll tell you where this pin position is. I didn't look. <laughs> so I'm just going for the centre at green. And it's probably just right off by my calculation. Hopefully we've got a bit of luck. It'll be left, it'll be bottom left. That's where it'll be, I bet you. Well, it could have been worse. It could have been front left, but it's pretty much front middle, I would say. Steady, steady. Yeah, it's all right today. Under 98 yards to the pin. This one's very nice on the eye, but not always very nice on the scorecard. I'm going to hit a five iron just for control. I mean, if I can sneak this somewhere up to about 190, because it's not going to go anywhere when it lands. This usually goes about 185, one, well, 185 carry, if I'm being honest, but that's a tough pin to be going at. Tough green to be going at. <laughs> Never mind, pin. It's the line. I don't think it's got the legs though. I think we're a little toe -y. It looked to me like it's front quarter, left quarter at green. That's done way better than I thought. It's nowhere near front at green. My eyes are bloody terrible. Roll out, roll out! We've done it. We've hauled the putt. I didn't think I'd hit that one. Well, for the last three years, you've been asking for more longer form content and we're weeks away now from going full time with the channel and being able to provide that longer form playing content. I hope you've enjoyed the front nine here at Rotherham Golf Club. We will be getting back out to share the back nine and as always, having a bit of a catch up and you know what's going on behind the scenes. But I must say, I'm so excited for obviously 1st of December. A lot of brands have sort of come forward to show some support to the channel. And, you know, we're getting some products sent that I've never seen, you know, posted by any other YouTubers. So I think it's going to be great to share some of that with you guys. It's going to be great to get out on the course and play more and, you know, obviously collaborate with other YouTubers and, you know, start some good playing series. I've got a great couple of ideas. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting time. So again, appreciate all your support over the first three years. And um, it'd be really nice to sort of, you know, get your support from here on in. So um, guys, thanks for watching. We'll be back soon to share the back nine at Rotherham Golf Club. And hopefully we can get another day like this and uh, play some decent golf.